Hey there, listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So, today we're going to be talking about The Empress by S.J. Kincaid. Um, this is a young adult science fiction novel. It's a sequel to The, Bi- the Diabolic, um, which I'm going to talk about briefly here because a lot of what I liked in this novel it connects to and stems from the previous novel, especially the sci-fi aspect. So, Nemesis is a diabolic. Now, the diabolics are genetically engineered humans. Um, just kind of think Wrath of Khan, you know, Dr. Nguyen Soon's uh, offspring. Can't believe I'm making a Star Trek reference. Hope you all are getting it. <laughs> um, but they've been inherently programmed. You know, so they are programmed from their core. They don't have the same intelligence as, you know, Khan and the rest of them did. They're animalistic until they are programmed. And what they're programmed for is to protect and love their assigned person until the day they die. You know, once the person they love die, it, it, it's pretty much like, well, what purpose do I have now except to avenge their death and then kill myself? That's a, kind of how the diabolics function in society. Now in the previous novel, a lot happened. Diabolics were then outlawed because someone took their love and revenge a little too far. And what happened was Nemesis's family was just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. So they faked her death so that they could continue to use her to protect their daughter, Sidonia. More stuff happens. Sidonia is requested to be basically a royal hostage at the royal court. So Nemesis takes her place. She pretends to be Sidonia. No one's ever met Sidonia. The royals don't really interact other than using avatars. And technology is so advanced that they can alter their appearance and often do enhance their appearance all the time. So you don't really know what someone really looks like in the novel. Um, So, you know, it wasn't that far-fetched. More stuff happens. Tyrus um, figures out who she is and they form an alliance against the Emperor because, you know, he's kind of a bastard. And his grandmother, who is as much of a bastard as he is, um, I guess, you know, he got it from somewhere, right? So, They form an alliance, they fall in love, more stuff happens, everyone finds out that Nemesis is not really Sidonia, and that she is in fact a diabolic, and you know what? In the end of the previous novel, they prevail, you know, I'm trying to not spoil the first novel as much as possible. Um, But it's important, and the reason being is... A lot of what happened in the previous novel, it really does connect to this novel. And I know you're just like, well, of course it does, Cynthia. It's a sequel, but it really did enhance my appreciation of this novel, to be perfectly honest with you, because um, Nemesis, I wanted to call her Sidonia for a second. Nemesis, as a diabolic, she really doesn't see anything long term. She's more of a short term, I must protect my person as much as possible. And also, diabolics, they're considered abominations. They they don't, they aren't considered as loving or they're not given a lot of thought, you know. People treat them as, oh well they, like animals basically. Um, They're like, well, they they don't know how to form attachments, they don't know how to love, blah, 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 blah. It's all very base level for them. That's how they think, right? But Nemesis has evolved past that. She isn't dead. um, And she has learned to love someone else other than Sidonia. She loves Tyrus. She loves him with all her being. And she has more self-awareness to her as well. And that's what I thought was really interesting for the novel because it really does play 
heavily in her relationship with Tyrus. There is so much tension there. Um, there's so much that happens between them. And it really does stem from her... lack of, not lack, from her short-sightedness, but it connects to her design. You know, it's not that she's short-sighted because she wants to be short-sighted. She has evolved as much as possible for herself. You know, if you really think about it, she has evolved so much as a character, just becoming self-aware, but there's still more room for evolution for evolving her character. Now that's what I think is really great with Kincaid's writing. She's constantly evolving this character through the narrative, through the, well, through the plot and the actions, <coughs> through the tension that is in the story. Because her short-sightedness, oh, it does create sort of a rift between her and Tyrus. They love each other so much. and. As a reader, you're kind of rooting for them. You're rooting for them to prevail. You're rooting for them to just kind of destroy everyone who is in their way. Everyone who means them harm. Because there are a lot of people who mean them harm. Not everyone is really thrilled with the fact that Tyrus is making Nemesis his empress. People are not thrilled with his idea of bringing science. Um, they think of it as heresy. It's not. So, there's a lot that goes into the story to creating that rising tension for the characters. And it really was well done. I personally was a fan. You know, I really loved the characterization. I really did love the storytelling. I love that rising tension. I love the tension between the characters because it does add so much to their overall development and their overall plot development. And another thing that adds to the tension, oh God, the unpredictability of the story. So here's the little bit of sci-fi that I liked. Um, they're gonna go see the interdict, Tyrus and um, Nemesis. They're gonna go see the interdict so that he, the interdict, who is basically like the Pope, He's the one who founded their newfound beliefs 500 years ago. And now you're saying, well, how can he be alive 500 years later? He lives in this very fragile piece of space right outside of Event Horizon. So he lives in this pocket. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. But he lives within this pocket of space outside of time almost. Um, when you go there, time is still moving outside. Again, as you are approaching a black hole, scientifically, time is slowing. You know, time is slowing down. Um, I maintain the belief that a black hole is just an entryway into a new universe, you know, the multiverse. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, right? So what if the Big Bang was just a black hole from another universe creating our universe? You know, it makes you really think. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Scientifically, um, time slows as you approach a, an event horizon. So in this little pocket of habitable space and this dude lives there like a hermit right they go they visit him turns out a year has passed once they leave now the gravitational waves really do limit when people can go and come so he doesn't get a lot of visitors he doesn't really know that his ideals have been corrupted you know I love the illusion there um, he has no idea that what he put into, he don't want to ban science, he don't want to ban the evolution of science, but of course people have corrupted his belief, 
his teachings in order to suit their own needs. Hmm, why does that sound so familiar? Don't you just love the subtext? Thank you, Kincaid, for the subtext. I love it so much. Um, people are using their religion to keep the, you know, the poor people poor, the rich people rich. Um, and I love that allegory there. I love the references there. I think it's really well done. So bravo, Kincaid, for your storytelling. Um, to anyone who says genre fiction is meaningless, well, you're just an idiot. That's a hit towards my uh, previous teacher <laughs> in creative writing. But anyway, I thought it was very well done um the science fiction because you know things happen that sends nemesis there by herself and then her and tyrus are separated for three years and then i'm just like jaw dropping like wow didn't see that coming i'm like how are they gonna get out of this mess now you know the story is 100 percent unpredictable you don't know what's gonna happen next you don't know what's alive you don't know what's misleading you don't know what's truth and that plays very well with her characterization. Yes, her storytelling is top notch, but it's also her characterization because Tyrus has always been kind of a misleading character. He's a good guy, but then you're like, is he really a good guy? You don't really know what to think of him. You don't really know what to trust in what he says. And I think that that's really good for the storytelling and for the writing. It's something that I really, really did enjoy. Um, I can't wait to read the next one. <laughs> I cannot wait to read The Nemesis. Uh, I'm just so excited, honestly, to see how the story is going to conclude. I I loved it. I thought it was really well done. And I love the science fiction behind it. I love this. It adds to the tension. It really does add to the, the rising tension of the story. It adds to the unpredictability. And I love that we're constantly seeing Nemesis grow and evolve as a character. She started off so completely different in the first book and now she's so different and I want to see how she continues to evolve so I have to give this book four out of five stars it was spectacular I really loved it I thought it was really well done I can't wait to see what happens next so once again um four out of five stars for the empress the second book in the diabolic series if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, please remember to purchase from your local bookseller or online book retailer. Please, I just ask that you support your booksellers, you know, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, your independently owned bookstores in your neighborhood. If you don't know of an independent bookstore near you, if you go on bookshop.org or IndieBound, they will connect you and show you, hey, here are all the independently owned bookstores nearest to you. If they're too far and you still want to support them, Purchase the book off of bookshop.org. It'll send a percentage of your sale to that bookstore. Um, please also support Barnes Noble and Books A Million as well. Um, I can't really say to Books A Million, but you know, I work for Barnes Noble and honestly, they are a company that has treated me so well versus, you know, my previous work experience, it, minus my school, you know, my work study at school, best bosses ever, love them. But, you know, I love my bosses now, too. Uh, I love my bosses at every single job that I've worked, but I think, um, you know, Barnes Noble, it really is an excellent company um, to work for. So please try to support your local Barnes Noble as well. You can buy purchase, you can purchase online on book at barnesandnoble.com. Um, in any case, I hope you all continue to support me by liking this podcast and sharing it with all your book loving friends. Please don't forget to subscribe. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading.